this is Sabina at Cross Keys Crafts with another hopefully short video. Uh, I was actually in the middle of cleaning my pub downstairs when I was watching the latest video by Natalie from NB Cards and she created that, some cards that inspired me uh, to this little project. What she did was she just used strips of cardstock uh, that she cut with fancy dies to create a background but she used it with sentiments and that made me think that the strips of cardstock whether it's plain cardstock or pattern cardstock could be a perfect background for all the toppers I have. At the moment I'm looking into using up all my supplies that I have collected over the years or even recently because these are recent purchases and what I'm talking about is, you've seen these before, they were leftovers from a magazine set. These were recent purchases to go with my uh, pattern paper. Um, these are from the same sem um, set here. So I've got some sentiment uh, toppers. I have got these tags that I have created cards with. And I don't know which order I'm going to post my videos. I've got another idea for the gingerbread man. And then I found these in my stash. I created these, if I think two years ago, potentially three years ago. And all this is, is stamped and heat embossed. This is with a glitter um, embossing powder. That was a copper one. It's very matte though. I don't know whether with time it turned a little bit matte or whether I overheated it at the time when I was not that ex experienced. I've got sentiments on um, black cardstock as well. I've got these laminated napkins. I'm sure I've got a card on my channel with that one. So, oh, and the other thing I saved, I think from last year, was this tissue paper box or the panels from it because it's got this snowman on it and I love the snowman and it's cardstock, I can reuse it. So my idea is to show you two variations of this card idea I just had. I try to keep it brief because my pub is still waiting to be cleaned. And yeah, but I thought before my inspiration goes, I quickly put the camera on and do that. So let me tidy up a little bit and then I'll show you what we do. I have chosen two toppers as examples. So I will use this copper one here and I've also you, I will be using this snowman piece here. By the way, when you've got cast out like this from packaging and you've got more layers than one on the back, always peel the one off that you're um, putting into the bin. So I will pull this one off because this is the one that is going to crease. Uh, depending on what glue they use, you can also use your heat on it, sorry, heat tool on it to um, loosen the um, glue a little bit. This one is so old and it's hot glue anyway, I think, on the inside. So I have to be a bit mindful when I put it on. But I assume if I put on foam pads afterwards, that will be fine and will make up for the remainder there of the uh, glue, hot glue there. So then you need to decide on the card size. Um, for both of these cards, I will go for a 5 by 7 card. Having said that, these are shop board, so they're probably slightly smaller. For the black one, I actually like craft cardstock with black and especially these, you know, the copper colour. And I think this would work nicely as a mail card. I find if I use white, that clashes too much. Uh, but I could stick with black, I could create my own card base, but I think this one will be really nice. And I've chosen the uh, 5 by 7 because then I've got plenty of space and I can create potentially a clean and simple card, although I've got fairly big toppers here. Then I was looking at the colours I have in these toppers. So with this one here, because I've already gone metallic, I'm going to choose some uh, metallic, smooth metallic cards here from this range here. This is from Dovecraft. I only recently bought this from DRK Crafts, but I know other uh, companies stock these as well in the UK. And it's got the like a, a copper colour, a proper gold and a rose gold in there. I wouldn't work with a silver, I think, here. 
but the other three colours are warm metallic colours that would work nicely with a copper embossing and the craft cardstock. And then for this one here, let me just put it a little, little bit closer. We've got sort of some foliage there with red berries. I know there's some foxes and there's some blues in here and some robins. So I could either choose something blue, but when I looked in my cupboard, um, I thought about having an example with pattern cardstock. I found this paper pad, which I, or paper pack, I should say, which I bought fairly recently and I'm sure I've used it in one um, card before on this channel. And it's got this lovely pattern paper and yeah i think that's the one i picked because i put it on the back here yeah because this has got the red berries as well and i think the colors although it looks fairly busy but we're going to cut that apart i think that would work nicely together so i just wanted to show you some variations but you could have plain cardstock for the strips or even um you know They've got some stars here, so you could have some stars. You could even go with some dark blue, but I'm trying this one here. I think this will be different. So I'm starting with the deer here. Let's put these aside. So I don't really have dies that create sort of shaped strips. What I do have is like these torn edge nesting dies. This one is the longest one. Uh, the ones. A little bit smaller is not seven inches high so I will only use this one and I have cut strips from the three uh, patterned sorry uh, colored uh, mirror card that I wanted to use I've cut it with my scissors I think I'll regret that afterwards and I want to use the rest of it but never mind sometimes we do these things so and I'm going to put these through the die cutting machine now and cutting it once with this edge and then I'm putting it through again and cut the other side with this edge so both are have got torn edges both sides but they are not the same and I think yeah I hope that will work what I will do though and this is my little tip when you put this through the die cutting machine I will put a piece of cardstock underneath to protect my cutting blade otherwise it will cut directly into my plate and the other thing is I will put a piece of paper on the top so that none of my on the marks of my top cutting plate will leave a mark on the mirror cardstock. I will quickly do this off camera. Obviously, I have it I have to send it through six times, twice for each strip. Uh, that'll take a few minutes and then I'll be back. I've cut my strips but this was actually a bit trickier for me than I thought because this die is really really wide and I've only got a slim die cutting machine so I couldn't really maneuver it too much to the side and the other thing was I told you to put some cardstock underneath forgetting that this would work as an extra shim and it was really hard to put it through so for the next go I just used a uh, paper which protects the die cutting plate, uh, plate a little bit but not very much so but I've got to cut all these and I'm really happy with them I think they look great I think one of them has got a little blemish um, but in general it's not too bad so and I think I would arrange these in the sort of shades as in Having the copper, the rose gold and the gold, I think this looks nice. And I like the fact that they're not even, could even turn them upside down. By the way, some of them were a bit funny on the corners. I just cut that down with my scissors because I think I might actually have to cut a little bit off the top and bottom anyway. So for my actual topper, I just had a little play with my dies. At first I thought I'd pick an oval, but... I think this would take up too much of the card and I don't like the scalloped edge with the torn edge in combination. I think a straight edge would be better. I tried another oval and then I thought I think a circle would actually be nice if I catch a little bit of that foliage on the top. But maybe choose a bigger one. I'm just checking. It also depends on what else you want on your card. I'm still on the fence whether I want one of my sentiments, but these are rather big, so I might not bother about them. So, just contemplating whether I go one size bigger. 
bear with me, which would be this one. I've also noticed the this deer's nose is a bit funny, so I think I will add like a black like nouveau drop afterwards and just indicate the two noses, maybe the eyes as well. I think I quite like the bigger one. So it's a bit tricky to picture it. I think what I will do is I will cut the bigger one, have a ply with the strips, and if I find this is uh, too big, I can still cut it smaller. Don't forget, when you're creating, you are allowed to change your mind. I had a play with this and I realised I don't like the craft cardstock at all with this combination. It sounded good in my head, but I don't like it. So I just cut a black card base here. At a later date, I will put a white panel on the inside. So that's a 5 by 7 card in black. And this looks so much better. The metallic cardstock pops really nicely. And this goes really well. It's a different black cardstock. This is smoother and this is a bit rougher. But I think this looks so much nicer. And I like the bigger topper with this now. And I think it would even allow me to use one of the sentiments here. Um, because it doesn't pop too much. As I said before, it is a little bit um, dull. But I think if I go over that maybe with my sparkle pen, I could change the look of that. But I think this one... I will cut with one of my oval dies. I'll have a look in a moment. Look at that. That would fit perfectly. So I think I'll do that and have a play with that. And I will, I think I'll do this off camera. I will just glue these down with my magic glue. And this one will go on a foam pad. But because it is not very sturdy, I will cut another circle and pop that on the back first so that this one will be a sturdy um, sturdy piece of cardstock and the same with this one. I have glued my strips down here. I just had to cut off a teeny bit there and a teeny bit at the top, otherwise they fit perfectly. But they need to dry a little bit. Also, I found it showed on the inside a little bit where I used the wet glue. So if you're not sure about your cardstock, just use some clear uh, tape, double-sided tape, you could do that. So these are doubled up now, but I find, especially compared to this really dark, smooth black cardstock, these lack a little bit. So I think I'm just going to spritz them with my homemade uh, shimmer spray. This is just some uh, super intense silver um, watercolour. Uh, in um, diluted in water in a spray. I don't have the gold version, but I think it doesn't really matter uh, as long as it's shiny. It's basically like a sparkle shimmer pen, but in a spray version. So, and I'm going to risk actually doing this on my desk. I've got the tendency to cover my desk in it, but I'm too lazy to get the, just pumping off a little bit on the side here, too lazy to get my spray box out. Not Actually, it's dripping, actually, rather than spraying. Ooh, not what I had intended. It's a bit better, and I've already got some on the toppers in the back. Never mind. This is what I do. I try to demonstrate things, and then I mess them up. But it doesn't matter. I think what I will get, though, is a quick tissue just to dab some of the drops off. So I've dabbed it off a little bit and now I've got this sparkle on here. If you've got one of those, I've got the Spectrum Noir Shimmer Pens or the Wink of Stella. It's basically the same effect. So I'm leaving these to dry for a moment before I pop them on. And as I said, I will also um, do this off camera quickly. I think put two noses on there. I think that would look quite nice. Maybe even the eyes. Um, just I won't use a gel pen because I think that won't stick on the... Um, embossed areas but just like a black drop I think that would work nice even if I have to apply it with a little toothpick or a dotting tool I might have to do that but yeah then I think my first card is finished I will just pop these on on foam pads and then I'll show you my second version Two things before I finish the card. The For the card base, the black card base, I used this cardstock here. This is the Dovecraft Premium Black Card. It's 240 GSM. 
and that's the one I found the closest to a heavyweight black cardstock because it's not always easy to get I find. So and then I thought I might just as well show you what I mean with dotting and using um, black drops. I've got these 3D pearl effects from Dovecraft. I'm not advertising Dovecraft by the way. It's a coincidence today that I've got so many of their products. This one I think I actually got from the works. So I'm just putting a little bit on the side here on some scrap paper. I'm not applying it straight away. So we're straight onto the project. I'm not sure how well the lighting is. So I'm just using a dotting tool here and I'm just dipping that into that um, into the pearls and then I'm just putting where I think the nose should be and I'm putting an eye here and this way it's so much easier to control it and I've got the eyes and nose where I want them to be I'm actually turning it around for the eyes now I've got too much on it or you could use a smaller one but I think this will be fine. So don't press it all the way down. Just take the top off. It will look like this. How cute is that? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Maybe the nose is a little bit bigger. But I don't want to mess it up. It's got a bit of a wonky eye there, but it doesn't matter. So I'm leaving this to dry thoroughly now. And as I said before, I'm going to continue now with uh, the second card. Okay, another disclaimer here. I'm just realising whilst I'm getting supplies ready that this these ideas weren't as quick as I thought they would be. Basically because I cannot make my mind up about the background paper for this topper. And sometimes these aren't that easy because I've got so many colours in them and they are very busy. So it's one of those moments here where I need to step away. But I just wanted to show you that I had thought about this would match. But... The styles don't really match. I don't know why I thought it would. Because maybe I had more dark colours around it and I thought it looked fine. This is not going to work. But it's not a problem. These papers come with uh, pieces that I can use as toppers. So that's not a problem. Then I thought because I've got these little stars in the backgrounds, background. I could maybe use this cardstock. This is from a... I've used this paper pad before. Um, oh, can't show it now put it back in the cupboard but it's got like guitars on it coffee mugs and whatever mm. I think it's from the works um but because it's more black and this one's more blue I don't think it works that well I think it would potentially be okay but I'm not 100% sure about this mm. so I thought I could maybe pick up some blue here and use that for the background strips but I cannot find a matching blue I've got three blues here, so I thought I might actually make that a feature that uh, it's different kinds of blues, and I think this would be nice. Um, I'm even just laying them out, looking at this and thinking whether I stretch the topic and make it just all blue. Because my idea was now to step away, maybe do some heat embossing or some stenciling on this to get some stars. But as I said, I'll have a think about this, I'll step away. Sometimes that's the best thing to do, to do something different and hopefully inspiration will strike me then. But my overall idea for this video was to uh, show you different ideas for basically using up your supplies and making quick cards. So once inspiration has struck me, this card will be quick, hopefully, and I will also show you some variations with all these little bits on my table that I've got here. So it's been about an hour later, I've done some of my chores and I've come back to my craft room and I have made up my mind. So I decided to cut a few half inch strips, some aren't really perfectly half inch but that's okay, they're definitely similar size. Uh, at the moment three of a kind um, of the three different colours and I want to create a row of these rather than just having three individual ones. I might even put them on an angle, depends on the length of these. But I just want to show you a tr trick. If you haven't got any of these fancy dies where you can die cut strips as a certain width, you can buy those. What I do is, if I've got a scrap of cardstock, I put it into my guillotine and I cut it to a certain width. 
this one I have just cut down when I reminded myself to put the camera on so this was like just over two inches so I cut this down to two inches so that now if I want a half inch strip I go to one and a half and then I know that the strip I'm cutting off is half an inch wide this is much easier than trying to measure here where I can't even read the measurements so and I'm now going from one and a half to one inch and that gives me another half inch strip so and I hope that helps you to cut these fairly even I've got a bit of a problem here now um, because um, this only goes to um, three quarters because I've got the metal strip there what I do in this case is I actually move this over it will be a bit difficult to see now for you but I'm taking one of the half inch strips and I'm placing it on this side to see how much of the cardstock I need to overlap. I'm also making sure it's straight here on this panel and it's easier if you've got a much longer strip and start like at four inches but I want to use up my scraps and this will be good enough. So I might have to move it a little bit at the top and then I've got another sort of half inch strip i think it's close enough uh, sometimes the eye is not as critical as the actual measurements so i would just like to show you a few variations of this theme of having three pieces or three strips so you could put them at a diagonal glue them down just cut off the axis there and then just place the top in the middle and stamp a centimeter at the bottom bottom so that would work the diagonal you could have them obviously like we have on the first card going here down on the side could even put the topper here on the side at the bottom at the top in the middle or even on this side and just have more of the strips exposed there's so many uh, things you can do with this but I think actually I'm going to divert a little bit from the original idea and I think I will put strips all over just because I've cut so many, having said that, the ones I've got left over I can use with some of these toppers. So I will just have a little play off camera again to keep this video short. I will just use my magic glue again to stick these down and as I said I will cut the excess off. And if I've got a long piece like this one here, but I'm cutting it off here, I can use the rest again a bit further down on the card. Oh, and one thing you can do, just thinking about that, you could also do some weaving. So having these come in from this side and then having strips going over, under, over, under. So that's another option you can do, if you know what I mean. So put this underneath here. In this case, if you wanted to do this, I would use some low-tech tape like my removable adhesive just to keep this in place a little bit and then put some glue just behind those joints before you stick it all down. I'm popping in again. I thought I should show you this actually. So as I said, I stuck these three together with my low tech tape and then I weaved these through here, making sure that the distance between the strips is very similar. And I'm just keeping these in place as well now so that they don't wobble before I start gluing things down. So just keeping this on the long end as well. So and either you can put some permanent tape here. That might work as well if it's difficult to get through the um, in between those bits there. But these here, the ends, you could just stick down like this I can lift this up for a moment but you see how much it actually wants to shift once you start taking that tape off so here's a bit tricky but I think the effect will be rather nice and use some quick grab glue like this magic glue or even the um, cosmic shimmer so that it doesn't move for too long and you can keep these in place whilst you arranging the other areas but it might just be the best if you've just stuck them down like this 
to put some permanent tape on the back I'll give that a try as well I think and then yeah as I said before I will stick this down onto the card base this is actually the back of it I want to have the blue here on the outside and then I will cut the excess off I'm in the middle of finishing this card off I have put foam pads on the back of this this is just some scrap that works in the middle but I'm really on the fence on where to place this so I just thought I'd show you some variations at first I thought I'd pop it up here because I wanted this woven bit to be exposed or even here but then everything is to the right hand side and to be honest I prefer it here so in hindsight I didn't have to bother about weaving this and it might have even been flatter if I just put these down and these down. But yeah, sometimes that happens. Just have a look uh, where you like to place yours or just make the woven strips the feature of the card without a topper. I think that would work as well. I actually like it like this. And I just added a little stamp here. This is from a magazine stamp set. I've used that quite a few times. Um, if I think about it, I'll put it in the description box, but you've seen me use that one before. So yeah, I think this is really nice. So I decided to create one more card off camera with this pattern paper because I wanted to show you how you can use these sort of patterns also as strips. And then I come back with all my three cards. My three cards are finally finished. This is actually the next day that I'm filming this. I'm really pleased with this one. It came together so quickly and I think it's so, so pretty. So I'm sure I'll be making more of these. All I did was I cut the pattern paper apart into different size strips. I actually cut a little bit off the side because for me there wasn't enough going on. I wanted the full berries on here. And I cut this one to half an inch, this one to an inch and this one to an inch and a half. And I put this on a DL card. I cut this from uh, A4 cardstock. So this is eight and one quarter long. And this is eight inches wide. And I folded it in half. Having said that though, when I cut this, let me just see if I can find my first bit. I've mislaid it now. Yeah, just wanted to show you this. I don't know why I do this. I cut it to eight inches first, scored it at four and folded it. And I always end up with something like that. I don't know why that is. I, I pay quite a bit of attention to where I'm scoring it. So what I did with this one here, I actually took the full sheet. I scored it at five, folded it and then cut it to four inches. I get better results that way. I haven't resolved uh, or solved that mystery yet why this happens, but never mind. Yeah. And then for my sentiment, um, I had a look at the topper sheets here in the pack. I decided not to have anything busy on the top. They do these great toppers. I think these are fine on planar cardstock, but I just picked one here from the top, the Winter Wishes. I popped that on the matte silver mirror card that I showed you earlier and I think this looks really great and I put that on foam on the foam pads I think this is so pretty and so easy to make so that's definitely my favorite from this video so I've shown you this one here now so as I said in hindsight I wouldn't have bothered about weaving the cards but I think it works and a great idea for recycling packaging so because I've got more strips here I will uh, use up the other four or even five bits no the other four bits i've got from that uh, tissue box and make similar cards so with the first one ah uh, i don't know it did not want to come together at first i had my little deer here and i love the shimmer on that they are pretty it looks a bit like a comic deer because of the nose but i do like it but when i placed it on the card the topper was getting lost and i was trying what to do so i cut a piece of well first i thought maybe i use this one with the stars in the background but the, it's more gray it's not really black 
then I thought I'd just cut some more mirror card. But whatever I did with this, it, I don't know, I didn't like it. So I dismissed the idea and I thought I'd just use this sentiment, making spirits bright. But um, my nesting dies, they alternate between the scalloped and the straight edge. And the bigger one is a scalloped edge. And as I said earlier, or yesterday in that video, I didn't want to mix these torn edges with the scalloped ones. So all I did was cut a same size oval in this mirror card and just offset it and then popped it on foam pads. And I think that works. And I think this is more the clean and simple idea. Uh, quite bold with the metallic strips anyway, but I like it now. And I think this is nice as a mail card. Whereas this one, I don't think it would have been suitable for a mail card. I'll have a look how I reuse these. I will, I think, use these up this year because, as I said, I made them two or three years ago. So I'll cre um, create cards, maybe just cut the panel out, mat it or so. Um, I am thinking about, if I do a lot off camera, to have a separate video where I just show you photos of all the cards I have made. Um, but yeah, sometimes it is like that. Sometimes you put a lot of work into a card and it just does not come together. Whereas other cards that you think sort of like randomly, oh, I just do it, work out really nicely. That's what it's like in card making. But yeah, in general, I'm pleased with this idea. And they all came about by basically using strips of cardstock or paper to create your card fronts. Yeah, and if you like this video, you might want to give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of what I'm creating, you might want to subscribe to my channel. I'd be very happy about that. And I'll see you soon with another video.